Hi students, this is Dr. Ways, and welcome to your lecture on the forearm. If you haven't noticed by now, uh, muscles that control a particular part of a limb tend to be located on the part of the limb that is superior to the limb that's, to the limb that's actually being controlled. So for example, all of the muscles or most of the muscles that control the forearm here are going to be located in the arm itself and the muscles that control the hand then are going to be located in the forearm and so that's uh, just kind of a general trend that I hope you notice so far and it's going to basically continue in that same general uh, vein there may be a few exceptions which you note uh, and that's perfectly normal but as a general rule always look one bone up for the muscles that are going to control the uh, part of the uh, limb that you're looking for. So when we talk about the lower limb, we're talking about this area that's generally from the elbow joint and the cubital fossa to the wrist joint uh, and the carpal tunnel here, uh, which we'll talk about when we get to the wrist. Uh, so all of this area right here, the forearm, and remember an anatomical position the palm is facing forward and the hairless part of your forearm uh, is also facing forward whereas the part of your arm, forearm that does have hair is facing uh, posteriorly. And just like other limb components that we've talked about, uh, the forearm is going to have uh, compartments to it. And so to lay those out, of course, it's going to have a layer of skin and then that layer of superficial fascia around it. But then you have this deep fascia that invests itself between uh, compartment layers known as our uh, intermuscular septa. And then our forearm is divided into the anterior compartment, right? The anterior compartment being that hairless compartment that's facing forward and the posterior compartment uh, that is facing towards the posterior part of the body. Uh, and notice that the posterior compartment kind of wraps around uh, laterally to the radius as well. So uh, the posterior compartment is going to have a lateral component as well, whereas the anterior compartment is going to have a slight medial component. All right, as far as the arteries go, remember the brachial artery is coming down here across the cubital fossa, and just as it exits the cubital fossa, it's going to branch into our radial artery, which is going to go laterally. Notice your thumb is right here. That's going to be the lateral portion and the ulnar artery, which is going to course medially all the way down to the wrist. The ulnar artery is then going to further branch into the common interosseous artery. That means it's going to go between the radius and the ulna, and then it's going to branch into the posterior interosseous artery, which is going to supply the muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm with blood and the anterior interosseous artery which is going to supply the anterior compartment of the forearm with blood and then of course there are going to be perforating branches of the interosseous artery that go through the interosseous membrane and supply the deep muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm with blood for the nerves remember that you have three of them coming down from the arm the radial nerve on the lateral side, the median nerve coming from the medial side but coursing uh, more towards the intermediate uh, portion of the forearm, and the ulnar nerve coming from the medial side that's going to continue coursing down the medial side, but then have branches that come uh, into the uh, dorsal side of the forearm and the uh, anterior side or the palmar side of the forearm heading into the palm itself. The anterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of the median nerve, also known as the AIN, will supply nerve impulses to the deep compartment, or the deep portion of the anterior compartment of the arm, or forearm rather. And then you also have a palmar branch of the median nerve coming down here. So ulnar nerve and median nerve will both have palmar branches, which will go to the uh, anterior surface of the hand or the palmar side. For the posterior compartment, we have this common interosseous artery uh, that will split off into the ulnar artery, which will continue down on the anterior side, 
and the posterior interosseous artery, which will continue on to the posterior compartment of the arm. And remember that you also have the radial artery, which is supplying the lateral side of the posterior compartment, extensor muscles uh, with blood. And then here's your, again, showing down the posterior part of the arm, the posterior interosseous artery. And notice that it makes a connection near the wrist with the anterior interosseous artery, so that anastomosis to make sure that there's a constant blood supply to these muscles. The nerve supply to the posterior compartment is uh, from the radial nerve, and the radial nerve is going to branch into the deep branch as well as the superficial branch, the deep branch going more to the uh, posterior compartment of the arm where the superficial branch is going to the lateral uh, posterior compartment of the arm. And we also have our posterior interosseous nerve. Uh, remember that that is a deep branch of the radial nerve, and it's also known as the PIN. And as you see it coursing down uh, between the bones, hence interosseous nerve, it's going to get supply, uh, give a nerve supply to the muscles uh, in the posterior compartment.